Dr. Mads Gilbert is a professor of emergency medicine at the University of Tromso in Norway, and he's been working in Gaza and training doctors in Gaza for the past 20 years. We've spoken before. Good to have you on again, um, Mads. So let's start talking about polio, because, I mean, this is a, it, it's a problem that's been eradicated in large parts of the world, so it's not something you hear talked about very often, but this is a, a severely deadly and, and debilitating disease, isn't it? I mean, how would you describe the threat it carries? Well, polio is a very dangerous disease. You can die from it and you can have paralysis, lifelong muscular paralysis. So it's a very dangerous uh, disease and very contagious. Uh, but it has been eradicated in Gaza for the last 25 years. And the coverage of vaccine in Gaza before uh, October 7 was 99% uh, vaccine coverage for children in Gaza. So all of this, what we see now, it's quite an absurd theater because the, the uh, reappearance of polio in Gaza is solely a responsibility of the Israeli occupation forces because of the lack of water, the lack of food, the lack of hygiene products like soap and shampoo and the destruction of the healthcare system. So this is a man-made polio epidemic. And it's six weeks since the first test was confirmed to be polio. And now they're starting with the oral vaccine. The Israeli army themselves started immediately that this was discovered uh, to vaccine their soldiers. So it's quite an absurdity. Now we are going to vaccinate children and then start bombing and killing them again. Why not just stop the bombing, open the water, open the food and lift the siege of Gaza, which would be really to care for the kids and for the people of Gaza. Whose decision do you think that was to have this, this pause to allow the vaccinations? Is that because Israel finally made that decision or is it because they were pressured into it? I think, to be honest, that Israel knows through their doctors and their epidemiologists that when there is polio in Gaza, it will leak through the sewage system out into the Mediterranean waters and the currents drift northwards and you will have polio in the shores of Gaza, of, of, of Israel, I'm sorry. So this is not, you know, polio virus don't obey any borders between countries. So this is a public health threat to Israel. And they know it. They've had it before and they did the same. They, they made some concessions, um, gave some million dollars to improve the water system in Gaza. So I think the reason for this um, lull in the bombing is purely egocentrical, that they don't want to have uh, rampant polio in Gaza because it will risk contaminating the population of Israel. So the only logical thing to do is to provide the basic presum presumptions for public health, which is food, water, healthcare system, security. And let me remind your viewers that currently the price of a roll of toilet paper in Gaza is between eight and nine US dollars. And the price of a bottle of shampoo is $45. So how can the parents keep their kids clean? How can you wash your hands after toilet if you don't have water and soap? So this vaccination is, of course, it, it is better than nothing, but it is not solving the fundamental problem, which is the siege and the ongoing bombing and the destruction of the basic living conditions for people in Gaza. And don't forget, so half of the population are children. Mads, I just want to pick up on what you're talking about, the, you know, the medical situation there and just how um, difficult it is. I, I just want to bring up for our viewers some pictures now. This is of a Gazan doctor. We've, OK, we've, we've blurred this so that it's not going to be offensive. Uh, it's a Gazan doctor amputating the leg of his niece. He did this without an anaesthetic. He was only less than two kilometres away from a hospital, but because of Israel's bombardment, he couldn't get his niece to the hospital, so he did the amputation himself without an anaesthetic. According to UNICEF, um, the UN organisation, there have been thousands of children who've had limbs amputated without anaesthetic. Clearly, this was a major medical disaster that was unfolding, and, and this particular incident was, was many months ago. So I suppose, I mean, maybe you've partly answered this, but if, they can, if Israel can say we're going to have a pause for polio vaccination, why didn't they have a pause to bring in medical supplies like anaesthetics, more medicines, when clearly people were suffering in, in very bad conditions? Why, why didn't they stop the massive killing, the massacre of the Palestinian civilians? Why didn't they stop the genocide? So the answer lies in the cynicism of the occupation strategy, because it is a genocide. It is a war crime, three war crimes going on at the same time. It is ethnic cleansing. It is collective punishment and it's the genocide. So your question is very pertinent. And I think the answer lies in the threat that a polio, a rampant, a widespread polio epidemic in Gaza 
would actually uh, be a threat to the Israeli and uh, civilian society because polio is extremely contagious and it runs in water. So the main problem with con con uh, containing the polio uh, spread in Gaza is to repair the sewage system, is to get water, soap, and toilet facilities for the people. The vaccination is sort of an, an end point. And, and don't forget, 99% of the kids in Gaza were fully vaccinated before the 7th of October. The drop in vaccination is a direct result of the siege and the destruction of the healthcare system. So it's all man-made and all is in the hands and the responsibility of Netanyahu and Mr. Blinken. Mads, really appreciate you coming on, giving us your expert analysis. Dr. Mads Gilbert, Professor of Emergency Medicine. My guest.